Hi, it's Marissa from BumblebeeApothecary.com. Today I'd like to talk about how to keep backyard chickens. So we have been keeping chickens in our backyard here in town for several years now and I actually grew up keeping chickens as well so I just want to share with you all the tips that I know of for keeping chickens in your backyard for laying eggs. I also have gotten lots of requests from you guys for doing a video on how we raise meat chickens as well. So I am planning on getting that video out as well, but I had this one planned to get out now, so I wanna do this one first about raising laying hens. There are lots of great benefits to raising your own chickens. You get the freshest eggs that you could ever eat. Chickens are really fun to take care of and to watch. They have funny little personalities. You can get them in different varieties and colors, so they're neat to look at. They're a pretty easy animal to care for. They're a wonderful thing to have if you have kids because then they get an actual connection of where their food is coming from. They get to help take care of the chickens and gather the eggs. I know that my kids think that's really great fun. If your kids are a little bit older, they can even start to make it into a little bit of a business if you have enough chickens to where you can sell some eggs. They could be in charge of that. And that's a wonderful learning experience for kids. So when you're thinking about getting chickens, there are some things that you should consider beforehand. You should think about whether you have the time to take care of them, the space to have them. You should definitely find out if there are laws around where you live that would say whether or not you can keep chickens in your yard. A question that comes up a lot is, is it worth it to keep backyard chickens and how much does it cost? As far as raising animals goes, chickens are pretty affordable. It's pretty inexpensive to buy the baby chicks. Their feed doesn't cost that much. You can supplement their feed with lots of table scraps that may otherwise be thrown away. They, It does cost something, so you have to make sure that you have the money for the ongoing upkeep. A bigger upfront cost is usually their coop and whatever you're going to keep them in. You can buy chicken coops. They can tend to be a little bit pricey but if you don't have the time and you want to just buy something already made that's definitely an option if you want to save some money and you're the diy type you can definitely make chicken coops for not that much money and that's a great way to go now let's talk about planning to get your chickens you want to choose a breed there's lots of different laying hens to choose from you can choose them that lay different colored eggs that have different color feathers some things that you want to think about are your climate there are certain breeds of chickens that do better if your climate tends to get pretty cold in the winter if you have neighbors who may not be so happy about noise then you might want to look into a breed that stays quieter. If you look online at hatcheries, they have descriptions of all the different chicken breeds. You can also go to your local feed store and talk to someone there and hopefully they have somebody knowledgeable in the different chicken breeds and they can help you choose one. In the springtime, a lot of feed stores have baby chicks there and usually those ones are good options for somebody having them in their backyard. The breeds that we have tried here at our house recently were Barred Rock and those are really pretty, but they do tend to like to escape. Unless you have a really secure structure, you might not want to do those. Right now we have one called Production Red and we've been really happy with them. They are a little bit noisier than the Barred Rock, but our neighbors don't mind and we don't mind. And both of those breeds lay really nicely and are good for cold temperatures. So just some things to consider. You can choose to buy chickens online from a hatchery or catalog. You can go to a feed store and pick them out. I will link below some of the hatcheries that we have bought chicks from before that we've been happy with. You also want to think about how many chickens that you want to have. You want to make sure that they're going to have enough space in the coop that you build for them and whatever outdoor area they have. We'll talk a little bit more in a second about how much space chickens actually need. When you bring home baby chicks, you're going to need a place for them to stay while they're little. You'll want to set up some type of a brooder. It can be any large container like a livestock watering tank or even a large tote container depending on how many you have. You just want to have something that the sides are tall enough that they won't jump out and something that you can hang a heat lamp in so that they will have heat. For baby chicks, you will also need the proper things for them to eat out of, a waterer and a small enough feeder that they can eat out of, and then the heat lamp to keep them warm and some bedding. Here is what our brooder setup looks like. It's bigger because we also raise some meat chickens as well. 
but this kind of gets you started with the idea. If you would like, I can do a way more in-depth video on just about caring for baby chicks, so leave me a comment below if you're interested in a video on that. But for now, let's keep this video from getting too long and move on to the adult chicken care. But once you have adult chickens that don't need to be in the brooder anymore, that are feathered out, it's time to think about how to care for them. They will need larger things to eat out of. You can probably use the same water that you used for the baby chicks if it was a bigger one. That's what we usually do. They'll also need containers for grit and oyster shell, and then they'll need their coop. So for where they're gonna live as adult chickens, you have some different options. You can do something where they're in a stationary chicken coop with access to pasture, where the coop doesn't move at all, they just have an indoor place, and then they have an outdoor area where they can come. Ideally, you want them to be able to come and be out on grass. Another way that you can do this is to have, like we have, which is a mobile chicken tractor, which has everything all in one, so that it has their fenced in outdoor area and their indoor roosting area and their nesting boxes all in one movable unit. And we have been really happy with this design. I will put a link below where we got the plans to build this one, but we can move it all over our backyard so that they have fresh access to grass. Right now, obviously, it's February and there's snow on the ground and there's no fresh grass or no really good way to move it, especially when the snow is deep. So they're just kind of staying here in this one area for the winter. And once the snow is gone and we're able to move them around again, then we'll do like we did last summer, where we move them to fresh grass every day. But this is also a very secure chicken tractor, so they're safe from predators in here. You want to make sure that whatever situation that you have for them to live in, that they have shelter, that there's enough ventilation in their sleeping roosting area. You want to have nesting boxes and roosts for them to sleep on at night. You want to make sure that there's enough space for each chicken. So this will kind of determine how many chickens you get most likely. You want to make sure for their indoor area that there's at least three square feet per chicken. And then for their outdoor area, you want around eight to 10 square feet per chicken. Those are not exact, you can vary, of course, but that's just kind of a rule of thumb to make sure that you're not making them too crowded. You might think that predators are more common if you live way out in the country, but there are a lot of predators that can be a problem when you live in town. Raccoons can be a big problem. When we had a different design for where we kept our chickens and not this particular chicken tractor, we did lose some chickens to raccoons. Basically, you wanna make sure that the mesh around the lower edge of whatever you make is small enough that raccoons cannot reach their hands in. We've also seen a fox in our backyard and I'm pretty sure that we lost a couple chickens to that before we had this chicken tractor, but we've lost no chickens after we've built this particular one. We've been really happy with it. So we feed our chickens organic chicken feed there is somebody here who gets feed from Nebraska and brings it every so often and we oftentimes will get layer feed from them. There's also good options at local feed stores for organic feed. You can get non-organic feed too if you want to save money. It's really up to you. We like the organic because that way we know that the grains are non-GMO. There's also a really super high quality layer feed that we have used sometimes that you can get from Azure Standard and we've been really happy with that. We feed that sometimes. I'll put a link below where you can find that feed. It's made of whole grains and a bunch of different other nutrients which is nice because that way the grains are not cracked open or anything and starting to oxidize, but they're just a little bit higher quality and better nutrient content that way. You wanna make sure that they have fresh water at all times. For winter time, chickens don't need too much extra care, but there are a few things that you do have to keep in mind. If you're in an area that does get pretty cold in the winter, like it does where we live, then you'll wanna think about putting something in there to keep them warm when it gets really cold. For us, we usually do this if it's like below 20 degrees or so. We will put just a regular incandescent light bulb out there, not a heat lamp, because that would be too much but just a regular light bulb out there overnight and that just helps give them a little bit more warmth to get through those really cold nights. You'll also wanna watch their water. You wanna have more than one water container during the winter months if it freezes like it does here. We swap ours out at whenever we need to give them thawed water. So we have like three of them. We always keep one inside and with thawed water so that we can bring it out when the other one freezes. So you have to keep on top of the water in the winter. You wanna keep their roosting area nice and clean and the nest boxes clean. Our favorite bedding for the nest boxes is has been burlap. 
the wood chips or anything else tends to get kicked out and lost over time, but the burlap is nice because you can take it out and clean it and then put it back and it doesn't go away. So there is cost associated with it. And then of course people talk, well, you could go out to the store and buy some eggs for less than it might cost to keep chickens in your backyard. And that's true. The big factory farms can definitely produce eggs for cheaper than you can probably raise them in your backyard. But there is one very important factor that you have to consider, and that is how the chickens are raised in the big factory farms and how their chickens would be raised in your backyard, what the factory farm chickens are eating and what they're eating in your backyard. If you go to a store and you wanna buy pasture-raised, organically fed chickens, you could be paying five, six, seven dollars a dozen for eggs like that. So if you are raising your chickens in your backyard so that where they have access to grass and bugs and sunlight and fresh air and you're feeding them organic food and table scraps from your healthy food that you cook in your kitchen, those eggs are going to be way higher quality than the cheapest factory farm eggs that you could buy at the grocery store. So in that way, we feel like for our family that it is a great value to be able to be raising these chickens in our backyard in that way, feeding them the organic feed, they're on pasture, all of that, they're super healthy, and the eggs have more nutrients in them than the cheap factory farm raised eggs from the store. And I'm gonna link to an article that talks about how there is that nutrient difference in those eggs depending on how they're raised. That is something to keep in mind. Okay, so let me know what you think. Do you have chickens or are you thinking about getting them? Do you have any questions? Leave me a comment below. I always try to answer all the comments that I get. Let me know if you wanna see some more in-depth videos like I talked about raising the baby chicks and I'll also have that meat chicken video upcoming as well, so be watching for that. Below, I'll have a link to my blog post that has lots more information on raising chickens. If you're new, I wanted to also mention that I have a free ebook. It's a DIY home remedy recipes ebook, and there will be a link below where you can grab that. It shows you how to make some different herbal salves and elderberry syrup, and it's a free ebook. Okay, if you like this video and found it interesting or helpful, give it a thumbs up. Share it with anybody else who you think might want to see it. If you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I make two new videos every week on nourishing recipes, natural remedies, and DIY skincare and home products. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.